Hello and welcome to Jason's Macintosh Museum. I'm Jason, your host, of course. <laughs> and what we're looking at today is a Macintosh classic from 1990. Now, considering how fast technology was changing in the 1980s and 1990s, especially computer technology, you would think that it would be rather odd for a computer manufacturer to introduce a new model of computer which was no faster than a model they introduced four years earlier. Um, in fact, a model that was not only no faster, but it was also, um, in one sense, had, um, well, almost no real improvements of any kind. But as it turns out, that's exactly what Apple did when they released the Macintosh Classic. Because internally, the Classic is almost identical to the Macintosh Plus, which was launched four years earlier in 1986. The Classic uh, has the same CPU, it runs at the same clock speed, it has um, the same screen, <clears throat> more or less, um, and it has the, almost the same um, set of features, in fact, as the Macintosh Plus. But when it was launched, it was launched as a way for Apple to have a very low-cost, low-priced uh, model. The issue Apple were having in the late 1980s was that their computers, especially the new Macintosh 2 line, were soaring in price, um, upwards, I think, of $10,000, in fact, for a high-end um, Macintosh 2FX. And in a sense, they had forgotten about the low end of the market. And that's one of the reasons, in fact, that the Macintosh Plus um, was produced for such a long time, it was produced um, up until 1990. So it had a four year production run, which I believe was a, still a record for any Macintosh model. But by 1990, Apple realized that they needed some low end or mid range machines to, to appeal to more cost conscious buyers. And as a result, in October 1990, they launched three new machines. One was the um, high-end, or fairly high-end, um, Macintosh 2SI. One was the lower-end color machine, Mac the Macintosh LC. And the third one was the Macintosh Classic. Now, the Classic was the cheapest of the three. In fact, it was the cheapest computer Apple was selling at the time. In fact, the base model of this, which had one megabyte of memory and no hard disk would cost you under a thousand US dollars, which at the time um, was, was very cheap as far as a Mac was concerned. But unfortunately, the Classic didn't really offer anything, any real improvement over the old Macintosh Plus. So a lot of people were wondering, well, why bother? Um, it still uses a, six, a 8 megahertz 68,000 CPU, just like the Macintosh Plus did. It comes with one megabyte of memory expandable up to four megabytes, just like the Macintosh Plus did. Um, it has the same nine inch black and white 512 by 342 um, pixel display, just like the Macintosh Plus did. In fact, the advantages over the Macintosh Plus were very few. Um, it offered an internal hard disk, which was one advantage. Um, it had the newer 1.4 megabyte super drive, and apart from that, um, there wasn't really much else. I mean, it had software-controlled screen brightness, but that was, that was basically it. But having said that, the Classic did sell very well in the educational market, mainly due to its low price. And to be fair, even though it had the same CPU as the Macintosh Plus or SE, um, it was actually about 10 to 15% faster. But in fact, if you compare this to, for example, a Macintosh SE, the Classic was a definite step backwards because the SE offered the ability to have two internal floppy drives or internal floppy and a hard disk. And it also had an expansion slot, which is something that the Classic did not have. But 
Even so, there are other improvements that were made to the Classic to improve it over the Plus NSE, and we'll talk a bit, we'll talk about those in a bit more detail. Um, but some other facts and figures, the Classic was launched in October of 1990 and was discontinued in September of 1992. So it was actually sold alongside the more powerful Classic 2 for a little while. So it has an 8 megahertz 68,000, one megabyte, one megabyte of memory expandable to four, and can be fitted with either no hard disk or internal 20 or 40 megabyte, I think it was probably or maybe 40 or 80 megabyte internal hard disk. So at this point, we'll have a closer look at it. Here's the front view of the Macintosh Classic. And as you can see, it was a evolution of the original compact Macintosh style. Um, and you can see that it has a bit more of a modern look than your original Macintosh. As I can illustrate by placing one alongside it. So what we have here is an original Macintosh from 1984. And when compared with a classic, you can see that there were quite a few design changes to make it, to give it really a more modern um, look. But surprisingly, the actual specifications, even when compared with the original Macintosh from 1984, the specs are quite similar because, again, both use a Motorola 68000 running at 8 megahertz. But of course, there were a lot of improvements to the classic over the original Macintosh. And in fact, spot the difference. We've got the Classic 2 alongside the Classic and the case design is identical. In fact, the only difference between the two is the internals, as in the Classic 2 has a much faster 16 megahertz 68030, while the Classic has an 8 megahertz 68000. But as I mentioned before, they're actually sold alongside each other for a brief period. Um, so you could choose um, the one that was appropriate for you. So, back to the classic. So the front, not much to really talk about. We've got the 9-inch black and white CRT, resolution of 512 by 342 pixels, the 1.4 megabyte super drive here, and the Macintosh Classic tag and Apple logo down here and no brightness control on this because this had software controlled screen brightness just like the Classic 2 and Color Classic did. So that's the front. Now on the side, a couple of points to note. This being a late production Macintosh Classic has the second, the second version of the rear case which has a cutout for the speaker. This was a problem with early build Classics and Classic 2s in that the speaker was mounted on the uh, power supply board or analog board behind um, the case. So in early build classics and classic twos, there was no cutout for the speaker. So you had a relatively muffled sound. Thankfully, Apple did realize the error of their ways and on later build models, they fitted the, this, this grill to improve the audio volume. And then we have the reset and interrupt switches on the bottom here. And that's about it for the side. So let's take a quick look. Whoops, my camera just, oop. <laughs> let's take a quick look at the back. So we've got the back now. And just like every other compact Mac, we've got the carry handle at the top and the two, two of the four case screws up there. Here we have the position where the battery would normally be on older Macintosh models such as the 512K and the Plus. But just like on the Classic 2, this one houses the screen adjustment controls. So by popping this little panel off here, we can see all the controls for the screen geometry, size and position. Unfortunately, they're unmarked. Not sure why that is, but you can, uh, of course, if you Google the Macintosh Classic Service Manual, which I'm sure you can find online, it can explain, it can tell you what all those controls do. So, put that back. 
So for, over from there, we have the Macintosh Classic information panel made in Singapore. All the various uh, certifications there. Then we have the serial number and manufacturing date. So this one manufactured in June of 1992. So it's a relatively late build Macintosh Classic, given it was, it was discontinued a few months after that. Then we have the fan outlet grill here, although the fan is not mounted behind there, it's mounted in the bottom of the case, but that's where the air can escape from. Power switch here and power inlet here. Just like the Classic 2, the Classic does not support soft power, so you have to use the power switch on the back. Security cable lock here. And then we have all the different ports down here. We've got ADB, external floppy, SCSI, printer and modem, and audio out. Now, if I remember correctly, the Classic 2, in fact, does support audio recording. In fact, if I quickly move over here, this is the back of the Classic 2, and you can see that we have a microphone port here, but not on the Classic. So you can see that would explain why there is a plug covering that port, because I would say the same case was used for the Classic 2 and the Classic. They simply changed the label and stuck a plug to cover the port if it was installed on a Classic because the Classic does not have sound recording capabilities. Okay, well that's the back view of the Macintosh Classic. So we'll take the back cover off and we'll have a look inside. So this is the inside view of the Macintosh Classic. So we'll just have a look what we've got. So we have the CRT up here. Again, this is the same CRT that was used in the Classic 2. And we have the power supply and analog board over here again. The same part that was used in the Classic 2, I believe. So that's the power supply and analog board here. The hard disk sits down here, mounted upside down. The floppy drive sits below that, just there. And then the logic board is right down at the bottom here. And notice that this is the memory expansion card that the Classic used. Because unlike the Classic 2, where you had SIM slots on the motherboard for, or on the logic board for memory expansion, <clears throat> the Classic used a special expansion card that itself had SIM slots on there. I think it was a way of keeping the, uh, keeping the size of the logic board down. What we'll do now is we will take this apart. Well, at least take the logic board out anyway. Okay, well, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. But just like other models of compact Macintosh, to get the logic board out, you have to first disconnect the hard disk, floppy disk, and power supply connector from the logic board. And also, in the case of the Macintosh Classic, you have to pull out the memory expansion card, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. So I'll unplug the disk drives. I'll take the, take the SCSI cable straight out of there. Now we unplug the floppy drive, which is down here. And then we unplug the power supply connector, which is just here. So just be very careful of the CRT when you, when you do this. Just move that, move that up like that. And now the board can be slid out of the bottom of the case, just like that. So there's the logic board. Now to take the hard disk out, if you wanted to, there are two screws to undo, one here and one over here. So if you take those two screws out, the entire drive tray can be pulled back and up and removed. Now to take the floppy drive out, you actually have to get at the, the screws underneath. These two screws here 
can be undone, along with, there's in fact, let's see if I can get a shot of that, there are two more screws, one there and one over there. If you take those four screws out, then the drive, a floppy drive, can also be removed. So, now that we've taken the logic board out of the Macintosh Classic, we'll have a closer look at that. Here's the logic board from the Macintosh Classic, and I should mention before we go any further that I've had to recap this board uh, because there was no audio. So, these electrolytic capacitors that you see in the board, um, they do look a bit out of place. That's because I've had to replace them all. And uh, might look a little bit ugly, but uh, it certainly does work. So, starting from the bottom, we've got the battery holder down here that takes your standard 3.6 volt lithium battery. We've got the CPU here, that's the, the 8 megahertz Motorola 68000. ROM chip down here, clock crystal there, some glue logic there. Here is the one megabyte of onboard memory soldered straight to the board. Then we have the memory expansion slot um, here, and that was that is only designed to take one type of card, and that's the Macintosh Classic memory expansion card, which we'll have a quick look at now. So this is the oh, there we go. This is the memory expansion card for the Macintosh Classic. So if you want to take a Macintosh Classic above one megabyte of memory, you need this card. So it slots in down at the bottom there. It has another megabyte of memory on board and then two SIM slots into which you can add another two megabytes. So your Classic can either have one megabyte, two megabytes or four megabytes. And so this one of course is fully populated with four megabytes of so with two one megabyte SIMs, it gives a total of four megabytes of memory all up, including the onboard memory. And note that if you do populate the SIM slot, you have to move the position of this jumper to tell the system that there is memory in those slots. So that's the memory expansion card. We'll just move that out of the way. Put this back. So moving on from there, we have the power supply connector here, some other controllers here, sound chip there with all these capacitors sitting around it, <laughs> some other controllers there, that's probably the SCSI controller there, the AMD chip, that's the floppy controller I believe, the VLSI chip, floppy connector there, ADB, okay that's the ADB controller apparently, and the various ports up at the top here. So it's very well integrated uh, compared with the older SE and Plus uh, because if, you, if you're if you familiar with the logic boards on those they're about two and a half times the size of this and have many many more components so there were quite a few advantages um, um, to the classic in terms of keeping the number of components down on the logic board which certainly helped reliability. But as I mentioned, just like any old Macintosh, the electrolytic capacitors on these boards do leak and fail over time, and so I've had to replace every single one. But thankfully on the Classic, there aren't many to do. So that's the logic board from the Macintosh Classic. So that's, that concludes uh, this part of the video series. Now in the next video on the Macintosh Classic, I'll be starting it up and demonstrating um, some software, in fact, an old uh, Macintosh game, in fact. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.